Many people who struggle with emotional eating believe that they're doing it because they love food too much or they're deriving true pleasure from their eating experiences. But I don't think that's the case for most people. In this video, I want to share with you why I believe emotional eating has very little to do with authentic pleasure. I'm Lori Montre, a trauma-informed eating psychology coach. I help you understand why you have challenges with food, and there is always a good reason. And I give you the tools and practices, which are not about willpower and control, that you need to overcome these challenges and enjoy food and body freedom. So I'll start this conversation by saying that you're never eating because you're bad or because you lack willpower, or because you're a gluttonous pig. Every time you're eating, you're eating because there is a need. Sometimes we humans eat because we're hungry and we want to experience one of the greatest pleasures of life. And this is wonderful. It's wonderful to meet our need for nourishment and enjoyment with food. We should be doing that three times a day, each and every day. The goal is not to shut down the gift that food can bring us, right? The gift of enjoyment. The goal is to eat in ways that satisfy your needs for enjoyment and comfort and nourishment in a way that's consistent with all your other goals. The goal is to eat when it actually feels good. So this leads to the question, when you're emotionally eating, how much are you enjoying your food? Now, sometimes we have the need for companionship, for comfort, for soothing, and we look to food to give us that, right? Because we learned as babies or little kids that food could do that for us. Deep down, we know that food gives us life. And I think we often forget that when we're caught in the battle with food, right? We forget it on a mental level, I should say, because your soul knows that food gives you life. Your physiology knows it. But we tend to have very complex relationships with food that take on a lot of different forms. And these different forms are all okay. We don't have to pathologize our complex and sometimes messy relationships with food. But I do understand that emotional eating is not serving you. I know that it causes you extra weight, heartache, and a lot of pain. I know because I spent decades battling my own food and body challenges. But currently, you may believe that you emotionally eat because of the pleasure it brings you. But as I said before, I don't think that's true. When you're looking to food to do something for you, most of the time, you're probably not getting real enjoyment. Why? Well, first of all, when you're emotionally eating, you're most likely disconnected from your body. You're not having an embodied experience. You may be upset. You may be checked out. You may be relatively unaware of what's happening in your body. And when your body is not a participant in the eating experience, you're missing out on the act itself and it can't be truly enjoyable. It may be quieting a lot of the noise, but it isn't giving you the fullness of what you truly want. It might put out the fire of pain, loneliness, stress, overwhelm, or other emotions, which is why we do it. But eating when you aren't embodied is never going to be truly an enjoyable experience. Secondly, emotional eating is often not an enjoyable experience because you're telling yourself that you shouldn't be eating or that you shouldn't be eating that particular food. And how much enjoyment do you think is available when you're being screamed at for doing it? Not much. So is it any wonder why in these kinds of situations we go overboard? Is it any wonder why we eat excess food when we aren't enjoying it? In order to feel the enjoyment of food on the brain level, we have to be aware of the experience and be truly embodied with it. Now, at some point, the food will start to affect your body, right? Once the body realizes that there's food in the digestive system, it will often switch you into the parasympathetic state so that it can start to digest the food. And this is one of the reasons why food soothes you. The food will also start to affect your brain chemistry, and this is especially true with sugary foods. But these reactions are on an operational level, not the soul level, meaning the soul is not being fed by an eating experience where you are either checked out, lacking presence, or beating yourself up. Now, many of you may not even be aware of how truly checked out you are with your eating experiences because it's just such a normal occurrence. Um, and you won't notice it unless you start having some really enjoyable connected experiences with food. I remember one experience in particular I had on a birthday a long time ago. 
It was a lovely Italian restaurant. I had an absolute love affair with a piece of tiramisu. And now sweets for me were always very forbidden. Now it certainly wasn't that I didn't eat them, but when I did, I was screaming at myself the whole time and planning how that experience would be my last chance to ever eat that food again. Sweets meant that I was terrible, that I was weak, that I was gonna gain 20 pounds at every bite, right? There was no actual enjoyment when I would eat sweets, but I needed them anyway. But during this beautiful birthday experience, I remember the permission I felt to eat and enjoy my food. I didn't have to weigh all the food choices and wonder whether I was good or bad or whether I was worthy or deserving of punishment. And at this beautiful restaurant where the courses were served slow in a relaxed way with edible flowers on the plate and the true care taken to create art on the plate. All the work I had done to repair my relationship with food combined with the beautiful setting, the gorgeous food, it allowed me to be fully present with myself and my food. And I remember taking a couple of bites and then looking down so overjoyed that there was still food on my plate because my experience with food was always one of there not being enough, even when my food intake had been excess in excess. And it was so impactful not to be beating myself up or having a conversation about my morality. And this experience all those years ago taught me something very valuable about what it could be like to actually enjoy my food. Now, although I had done a lot of work to get to that point, to the point where I could be with food in that way, this experience really created the desire for me to make more and more of my eating experiences truly nourishing ones. Now, you may be listening and thinking to yourself, okay, that makes sense. Having nourishing experience with food, mm, that sounds lovely, but that's not my reality, Lori. I don't know how to make that happen. So I'll address this by saying, first of all, overcoming emotional eating is about three main keys. Working with the habituated pathways that drive you to eat in response to certain cues. Working to calm stress and overwhelm because when your nervous system is in a well-regulated state, you can make conscious choices about food. And number three, learning to feel and process your emotions in a way that feels safe so you aren't turning to food to help you deal with those emotions. Now, these three keys are so essential for overcoming emotional eating that I've created a series of free gifts to help you understand them. And you can download these free gifts by clicking the link below this video. But what can you start doing today? While you're working with the resources below, I have an invitation for you. What if you gave yourself a week where instead of fighting your relationship with food, your focus was on how to create more enjoyment with food, how to be more present with your food and your decisions, regardless of what they are. Now, I'm not suggesting that you give up, eat whatever, and, and, and don't even worry about it, right? Don't worry about your health, don't worry about your weight. I'm not saying that. I'm saying giving yourself a week to work on becoming more embodied and more connected during your eating experiences will give you some excellent data and insight into your next step towards food and body freedom. Now, you may have some thoughts on how to do this for yourself, and if so, that's wonderful. But if not, here's a couple suggestions that you can try on. Number one, stop the food fight. And this means give yourself over to the experiment and stop criticizing yourself and judging yourself for your food choices. Just let them be for a week. The battle with self and food is one of the biggest reasons why you can't be more present and conscious with your eating experiences. And number two, before you eat, take a moment to do a somatic practice that can reconnect you with your body. That could be taking three nice deep breaths, placing one hand on your heart and one on your belly. It could be taking a moment just to note what you notice. Just remember the goal of this exercise is not to prevent you from eating, it's to help you enjoy it more. The third thing is to stop and ask yourself, what are you really hungry for? Don't just settle for what you can most easily get your hands on, but ask the question, in this moment, what would be most satisfying? And number four, prepare the food. Plate it as if you were serving royalty, because quite frankly, you are royalty. And that's true even if you're eating ice cream from the freezer. Make it lovely. Dedicate yourself to this experiment this week. Download the free resources and gather important data on how you can finally change your relationship with food. 
Now, if you found something in this video interesting or helpful, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. This helps me get more material to you and to others that could use support. I really look forward to hearing your questions, your insights, your comments as always. So put them below in the chat and myself or someone from the team will respond. Thank you for spending time with me and bon appetit.